goals, I would first like to introduce the motivation section. So optimizing compilers are, uh, are interesting and uh, to improve the performance of transform programs, and, uh, but it's also complexity, complex, and uh, let's imagine the GCC compiler, which has 7.3 million of lines code and involve handles open bugs. And uh, important, also important research compilers like Joe's compiler, uh, developed by Lawrence Lab. And uh, a kind of important uh, uh, optimization is loop transformation, which for example, the parametric tiling, which is to decompose the program into uh, different, block side, different blocks and uh, the tile size actually determine at the runtime. And also the recursive decomposition is also a nine fine transformation. So this optimizing compiler machineries are complex and uh, how to make sure the, the transform progress is correct. It is important to make the transformation correct, uh, correct because sometimes the transform program uh, can up to thousands of lines of code and it's hard, very hard to debug it or check it by hand. So how to catch the bugs in the compiled program is the problem. And I would like to introduce three state-of-art approaches. The first typical one is to check the output of the two programs, in which you pick one data set and you uh, execute both of them, and you see the output of these two programs, whether they are the same. Obviously, this is a uh, work applicable for any program, and the cost of space and uh, time is uh, proportional to the original one. But again, obviously, it's only valid for this one data set, and uh, it highly depends on the data set choice. And uh, take a very naive example for a matrix multiplication, you happen to set all the data sets to zero, and all the tests will just pass it. So, so the problem of this approach is the difficult or impossible to find a data set which can expose all the bugs in the transform program. And uh, the second approach, which is to prove the equivalence of two programs, and uh, this is to build a model between, uh, of these two programs, and you find a map between operations of the transform program and the original one. And the two, for example, the, uh, the ISA2, which is divided by Dr. Swen at 2012 on top of us, is actually to prove the equivalence of two programs, which is very general and valid for any data set. But the limitation is just to work on a limited program since it the ISA2 the, the ISA take uh, fine uh, programs into consideration, which means it only can handle the uh, fine transformations, the, the parametric tiling or uh, parametric uh, uh, or the domain uh, decomposition cannot be handled. So the problem of this approach would be the restriction on the transformation that can be handled. Uh, the third one is to check the equivalence of the execution trace, which you uh, execute two programs and recall their memory addresses, read and write, and operations, and you find a map between these two operation traces. And the two example, like the code one developed by Dr. Scor uh, Scorden uh, at 2014, and uh, it works on arbitrary program, obviously, and it also can be accelerated. Uh, but the problem is the space complexity problem, which take a simple example for a matrix multiplication for a very small size, the trace so the size of the trace can up to 10 gigabytes, which is huge, and uh, so the problem for this approach will be the space complexity issue. Now I would like to introduce our proposed approach, which is a hybrid static plus dynamic uh, approach to, do, to perform a dynamic verification. We are targeting on uh, bio challenges with the data set restrictions and the space complexity. The outline of our approach is, work, is as follows. First, we perform a polyhedral static analysis on the input program and we'll generate the checker code. Then we adapt and uh, embed this checker code into the transformer program. And then we run it, and any violation of the date dependence or iteration reality box will be uh, reported. And finally, we conclude about the program equivalence. Uh, let's see some features of our proposed approach. First, the time, time complexity, which, which is uh, proportional to the original program or original transform program, and so as the space uh, complexity, and we will see details later. The coverage of uh, our approach is to take uh, a fine program into input and will handle arbitrary loop and non-affine transformations. 
we assume that no aliasing or st statement change or uh, alternating the array index expression involved. So the property of our approach is that any uh, violation of the iteration reordering in the, in the verified operations will be fine. Now uh, let's introduce our approach in uh, detail. I would like to start with a very simple example. Uh, there's, uh, there are uh, this simple program, program you show on the top, uh, which has two loops and uh, two arrays. And the execution trace is shown uh, in the below. And uh, on, uh, on the bottom left is the statement uh, instance we called. Uh, it, uh, it is a unique identifier for a statement for a fine program, which has iter iteration vectors and a statement name. Uh, now let's see uh, iteration reordering transformation, which is a permute I loop and J loop. Uh, actually, it maintains the number of operations and uh, just uh, the reordering of the statement order. And let's see another example, which is reverse the J loop of the original code. And uh, actually, this is an invalid reordering transformation, and uh, let's see the reason. And uh, the key point of a iteration, a valid re iteration reordering transformation, transformation is to preserve the dependencies. Let's take an example of the first uh, first row, which is the x1 of statement 11 is the last producer for the second uh, uh, statement instance, as 12 as shown in the arrow on the left. And uh, you, uh, let's see the permutation of i and j. The S11 is still the last producer of the consumer instance S12 on column three, on row three, sorry. And uh, then let's see the invalid uh, reordering, which S11 uh, is not the producer of the statement one, two, and the second column, a uh, second row. So it, uh, it is then the statement S13 became the producer. So it is a violation of the iteration ordering. Uh, so based on this intuitive example, uh, the problems are how, how to detect this invalid reordering transformation could, could be uh, three, uh, basically three problems. First is how to recover the same instant identifier from the execution trees, and how to get the last producer of each operation, and how to check this last producer is the correct one or match the correct one. So again, let's see this one by one. First, we uh, storing solve the last producer problem by a variable called shadow variable, which is the same has the same set as the original one, and uh, we also we recover the statement as an identifier also based on this shadow variable, and uh, we use this compute instance function, which I will detail later. Uh, we take parameters like shadow variable, array name, and we will generate the current execution instance. So again, let's see a simple example of the original permutation ing example. This is an update of the shadow variable, which x, y, xs and yis are the shareable for div2 arrays, and get, it get initialized at the beginning, and along with the execution, it get up, updated along each execution when there's a producer for that uh, shadow variable. Uh, you can also see the, it's along the execution. The table shows the update of the shadow variable access. Now the third problem, how to check this last producer match the correct one. Uh, again, we use the invalid example to show, and a partial runtime checker is shown on the right column. And again, I want to introduce uh, by a simple example, which only lists uh, three execution trays here. And uh, we take the, these parameters into input as the computer instance which has a shadow variable, arrays, and a statement. We will generate the current execution instance. And uh, remember that now we, along with execution, we will record the shadow variable with, with, with the last producer, which is shown at the middle column at the bottom part. Right now, it's a shadow variable of read x and the write x also sto store the current last producer of this current statement instance. Now we can match, we will match the two uh, statement instance, which is the correct uh, last producer showing on the right-hand side 
which will based on the current instance execution instance, we will generate the correct 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 last producer, and we also have the current uh, shadow variable store the current uh, last producer of the current execution, and uh, if there's a mismatch, that means this current reordering transform transformation, the last producer of the current execution instance, it doesn't match the correct one, which is shown on the first row of the example, there's a mismatch, then the assertion will fail and we will report an error. So from this simple example, we, we can see the basic intuition method that to, to detect the errors. Now the, here is the general algorithm, the skeleton of the checker code. Basically we have three different parts. The first part is the initialization, pre-log, we will initialize the shadow variable, and uh, the verification happened at each operation encountered, and the terminate part is to make sure that every statement, leave out data will be checked, uh, because there's some situation that your program may omit some statement, or it will duplicate the statement. It all will, it all will be checked at the termination part. And uh, the compute instance uh, function, we will leverage the polyhedral static analysis, or to generate the functions like first writer and last next writer for use to generate the current in a statement instance. Uh, the details can be seen in the paper. And in the paper, we also show the theorem that uh, the algorithm will terminate without error if and only if the operations were verified in the transfer program. And uh, so the general algorithm is generic for all the affine input program but it has minor corns, which is the runtime overhead and the space overhead due to the storage of the last producer instance. And uh, we, th it can be optimized by storing just a version number into the shareable instead of the last instance, which is the number of writes happens to a particular memory location. Obviously, this will introduce lower overhead and less space requirement. But this applied to limited program, a fine program, which the it, uh, which the, the, which, uh, the class of a fine program that uh, is need to recover from the current in, uh, access function for the statement. But uh, practically, the, most of the fine uh, functions uh, will satisfy these limitations. Uh, now I would like to show the coverage example that our two can handle. The uh, first program is the original one, which is copied to arrays, and the others are transformations based on tools or by hand. The ISA tool can only verify the fixed tiling, which is the second one, but our tool can handle all of them, including the recursive uh, recursion decomposition transformation. And now I would like to introduce the experimental evaluation part. We evaluate our approach by several different compilers, First, uh, we evaluate by the uh, polyhedral compiler collection. We emulate the bugs into transform uh, programs uh, based on some protocol. We introduce randomly uh, kind of four different categories which relate to the loop bound, uh, uh, rig size, permutation, and code motion. And uh, the, the, at the bottom is a co uh, compiler passes comparison with the two ISA. And uh, clearly, uh, we have more widely coverage of compiler passes than NSA2. Uh, next, we evaluate uh, using Silk and the uh, Poshua stencil compiler. And uh, again, we use similar uh, bug injection protocol, and we evaluate the result and shows uh, in the table. And uh, here, I just know that we also can handle the Poshua stencil code, which is a recursive version. And uh, last, we evaluated the overhead, runtime overhead of our polycheck. And uh, we choose the polybench benchmarks and they optimized by two tools, which is a uh, fixed tiling by Pluto and uh, parametric tiling by PTEL. And uh, you can see the black columns are the, are, are the transformer code, execution time, which is normalized to one. And the gray column are the polycheck without execution, the original code is a pure polycheck. And the white column are the polycheck with optimization of the full tile part. Uh, we can see our polycheck runtime overhead is much lower than the transformer program. Uh, the conclusion to take, to take home is that the, our approach is a new dynamic verification approach of a fine program for any loop and non-affine transformations. 
we address the limitations of previous approaches, and the correctness and the effectiveness are evaluated through different compilers, and we also find a not new bug, an old bug in polyopsy. And some future work could involve the uh, verification of the parallel transformations. Thank you. Uh, Albert Cohen from Inuya. I think I missed the, I misunderstood the um, limitations you have with the, the simplified approach, the optimized approach. Okay. okay. And then I have a question afterwards. C can you explain it again? Okay. Uh, the limitation is that uh, uh, the iteration space vector could be recovered by the uh, in array exact functions based on that statement, which uh, basically the, there's a linear system can be viewed. It, the iteration, uh, it's a iter uh, the iterators of the loop can be recovered by the statement array exact index. So the, but the, the, linear, the, the linear system of that statement should be full rank. But the, I mean, I'm not sure I understand that. Does that, does that mean that a single assignment uh, program uh, always fit the, always satisfy that constraint? Yeah, yeah, most of them are satisfied. So take a single example for this uh, two loops, the statement involved all the uh, loop iterators in the statement, so that is satisfied. If this statement only, only contains the uh, iterator uh, i, so that is okay. not satisfied the uh, limitations. All right, because all, all the, um, <coughs> so my question is really about the claim that it is um, almost always uh, satisfied. I mean, it, it, it highly depends on the transformation that you apply. If, for example, if you apply transformations of the previous presentation, like uh, storage mapping optimization, uh, array contraction, you may end up violating the constraint uh, uh, very often. To, yeah, Did yeah. I get it right? Or, yeah. okay. uh, on the other hand, I think you can uh, kind of pre-process the code by expanding it again, I mean, uh, converting it again to single assignment, ir irrespectively of the affine transformation that was uh, applied to the iteration space or schedule. And then you can always pre-process the code to satisfy your, your constraints. Am I right? Uh, but the gen generic, uh, yeah, yeah, that correct. Then, then, of course, it behaves differently in terms of cache, et cetera. But at least to check the affine transformation on the control, I think you can, you can do that. Uh, can you just, uh, my impression is that you could always pre-process the code by just converting to single assignment, uh -huh. and then you satisfy the, the constraints. Yeah. It's a different program, but you can at least check the, 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 the bounds are correct. Yeah, yeah. It's correct? Okay. Uh, I, yeah, we are thinking about to change to convert all to static numeric equation, but uh, it's highly, but our approach is highly dependent on the execution trace. You see that when you execute, you know the, actually the statement instant, and you know the last one, and uh, it's, uh, right now it's, uh, it's not applicable, uh, I believe. To, to fully change it change to a static uh, verification approach. Uh, what do you mean by the minority? Uh, like I, I will give a, a very specific example. Uh, think about a 10, ten lines program, which is a JQB code, and uh, the, po po the polyhedral compiler could transform or expand into a thousand of lines of code, which is the 10 program from a 10, pro, 10 lines program. It's, it, I will say it's uh, difficult to, to check it by hand, and if you would like to check 1,000 lines of code by hand, okay. I, because the transformation will always expand on the code into thousands of lines. 